Hello, sweetheart. How is your trip? Wonderful, fine. How are you? Don't you look lovely. I'm glad to have you back, thank Mr. Williams. Thank you, Louise. How are you? It's about fine, time, thank Joe. you. We missed you, Daddy. Well, I missed you, too, Daddy. Oh, let me look at you. My goodness, you must have grown three feet. I don't think I grew any. You must have gotten shorter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that a new dress? Uh-huh. Look at you. My, my little girl has sure grown up. Hey, Dad, who's the company? Oh, June, I'm sorry. Kids, I, I want you to meet Miss, Mrs. June Richards. This is my family, dear. Uh, my daughter, Terry. How do you do? My How son, do you? Rusty. How do you meet do? you, Rusty. And uh, uh, the boss of the family, Louise. <laughs> Hello, Louise. How do you do, Miss Richards? Well, I'd better take your things, Mr. Williams, and get them out the way. Thank you, thank you, dear. Well, well uh, let's uh, not just uh, stand, let's uh, sit down. Sit oh, down. All right. thank you. Kids, uh... Come on, tell me all the news now. I've been away a whole month there. Must be a lot you got to tell. What 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 happened around here? Oh, nothing much. Huh? We missed you, Daddy. Well, thank you. I missed you, too. I thought about you every day, and every night when I said my prayers, I put in a good word for you. <laughs> well, June, this is the family. What do you think of it? I think you have two lovely children, Danny. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I'll keep them till the new models come out. <laughs> I hope we can be good friends. Rusty, like to come sit on my lap? Sit on your lap? Oh, yes. Look, lady, I'm nine years old, going on ten. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be shaving in a few years. Yeah. Excuse me. I don't go in for that stuff anymore. That's part of my past. Oh, well, I didn't realize. Besides, why should I sit on your lap? I hardly know you. All right, all right, all right. After all, I'm no pushover. All right. <laughs> Besides, I didn't bring Junie here for you to sit on her lap. I brought her here for the express purpose of meeting your kids. I want her to get to know you, and I want you to get to know her and, and be real good friends. Well, that's very nice. Um, Daddy, could I speak to you for a moment? Well, certainly, darling. What is it? Well, I mean alone. Well, honey, can it wait? Well, it's very important. Well, if it's important, certainly, certainly. Will you excuse us, Mrs. Richards? Well, certainly, Terry. <laughs> Rusty will keep you entertained. Sure, Daddy, but none of this sitting on our lap business. <laughs> All right, now what's this world-shaking problem that can't wait? Sit down, I want to talk to you. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> now, who is this woman? <laughs> I told you, her name is June Richards, Mrs. June Richards. Come on, Daddy, you know what I mean. Who is she? She's a lady I met in Chicago a couple of weeks ago, and, well, we... We hit it off right from the start, and I saw quite a bit of her while I was there, and well, the more I saw her, the more I liked her. She's a very warm-hearted, kind, sincere person. But why did you bring her here? I told you, dear, so she could meet you and Rosson and see our home. Daddy, are you in love with her? Well, are you? Well, do I have to answer that question right now, Your Honor? <laughs> no. No, you don't have to answer it. It's written all over your face. Oh, if, if I live to be a thousand, I'll never understand you men. The minute I let you out of my sight, you go get mixed up in something. <laughs> oh, Daddy, how could you? How could you fall in love with this strange widow in Chicago? I don't know. Just lucky, I guess. <laughs> never happened to me in Pittsburgh, and I've been going there for years. <laughs> Come to think of it, it never happened in Toledo, either. Well, let's stop making jokes and figure out what we're going to do. Oh, I'll tell you what we're going to do, honey. We're going to make believe I'm the father in this family, and you're one of my children, instead of the other way around. <laughs> I'll discuss this with you at another time, dear. We have a guest in our house now. Daddy, I gotta talk to you. Oh, now, Rusty. Daddy, it's important. 
Look, Russ, all right, I can save us both a lot of time. I met Mrs. Richards in Chicago a couple of weeks ago. She's a very kind, warm-hearted, sincere person. I got to liking her. We got to liking each other. I figured it'd be a good idea if she came here to New York and met you and Terry and saw our home. She's a widow, and I'm very happy I met her in Chicago because there are very few strange widows in Pittsburgh, and if he hollers, let him go. Now, what's your question? <laughs> that Mrs. Richards. Get out of here. <laughs> Mr. Williams, I'd like to talk to you. Holy The <laughs> way she held her little finger on while she was drinking coffee. <laughs> and you know what she said to me? Teresa, darling, I simply adore your dress. It's divine. Well, we must have a long talk about clothes sometimes. I'd value your opinion. <laughs> How phony can you get? She thinks she's fooling. Daddy. She's not fooling me. She doesn't like us. What's not to like about us? <laughs> We're adorable. Oh, I didn't mean just us. I mean kids in general. She just doesn't like them. How can you tell? I don't know. I, I just feel it. Me too, and I can't tell why either. I guess it must be my feminine intuition. Yeah, mine too. Terry? I thought you were asleep. Uh, well, well, I just came to borrow this book. Tom Swift and his rocket ship? <laughs> Why aren't you asleep, Russ? I'm the one who's lending it to her. <laughs> Sit down, dear. Let's cancel the shenanigans, shall we, and get to the bottom of this? What's going on in this house? What's the matter? We can't sleep. We're worried about you. Well, that makes it mutual. I'm worried about you, too. What's troubling you? Well, it's... It's that Mrs. Richards. What about Mrs. Richards? Well... She just doesn't like us. She doesn't like you? You got your facts a little twisted, haven't you? She spent the whole evening trying to be nice to you. You treated her like she was typhoid Mary or something. Anyone can see that she doesn't know a thing about children. Now, Terry. Yeah, asking me to sit on her lap. <laughs> was that such a crime? Then she asked me if I do finger painting at school. Wow. <laughs> What's so wow about that? I never painted a finger in my life. <laughs> she was so icky with me. She was so what? Icky. Now, what on earth does icky mean? Well, she said, Teresa, darling, you must get your hair cut. That style is much too matronly. And that's being icky? Yes, it is. Oh, I'm glad you told me. Next time I see the word in print, I'll know what it means. Daddy, are you going to marry her? Terry, I... I don't know, sweetheart. Mrs. Richards is a very nice person. I'm sure she'd make a fine wife and, and a real good mother. We don't need a mother. Look who's talking. Aren't you the kid I caught putting chocolate syrup on his oatmeal? It's just an experiment. That's what mothers are for, to ward off these experiments. Babies, I love you, you know that. And I've worked very hard trying to be two parents, but kids, no matter how hard I try, I just cannot be a father and a mother. I'm not that smart. That's true. You don't have to agree. <laughs> Daddy, marriage is a very serious matter. <laughs> well, thank you, friendly old philosopher. <laughs> I happen to know a little about the subject. I was married once, you know. How do you think I got you kids, with green stamps? <laughs> Daddy, I don't even see how you can mention marriage. You hardly even know her. I know her well enough. But that's beside the point. 
The point right now is who is the parent and who is the child? I'm the father in this family. If I decide I want to get married, I certainly don't have to get the permission of my children. Well, if you marry her, it'll be over our dead body. Terry! Yeah, see how you like it, walking down the aisle over two little corpses. <laughs> Just look at you, the two of you. Selfish, that's what you are, selfish. Thinking only of yourselves, never about me at all. Ever occur to you that a fine, lovely woman like Mrs. Richards might be important to my happiness as a man? I look, Dad. No, you look. It's high time I asserted myself in this household. I'm taking Mrs. Richards to dinner tomorrow night. And if I feel the same way tomorrow night as I do right now, the subject of marriage might very well be discussed. That is that, and good night. He's getting out of hand. <laughs> well, I guess we're sunk. Maybe she won't want him. Are you kidding? He's a great catch. He's successful, he's young, he's fun to be with, he's kind and generous. Oh, she'll gobble him up like a peanut. Yeah. Too bad he's such a nice guy. Yeah. If he were only a... Hey, wait a minute. I have an idea there. I might? Yeah. That could work. Well, what is it? What is it? Tell me. As long as it's my idea, I have a right to know. <laughs> Listen. She thinks Daddy's a kind, sweet, generous man, doesn't she? Mm-hmm. Well, now, suppose she found out that Daddy was a rat. My Daddy's no rat. Is he? <laughs> But she's only known him for a few weeks. He could be anything. Now listen, what would happen if we made Daddy look like an absolute stinker? Well, I guess she wouldn't like him. Exactly. And if she doesn't like him, she's certainly not going to marry him. Sis, I got to hand it to you. You're a true snake. <laughs> <laughs> Should I have Louise put on some coffee? Oh, thanks. I don't know where I'd put it. <laughs> Me too. You know, every time I eat at Villa Venice, I just have to go without food for the next two days. <laughs> I know what you mean. <sighs> What's the matter? I don't know. It's uh, kind of quiet in the old corral tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's so unusual. I tell you've never had children. Usually, Terry's got the hi-fi going so loud upstairs it rattles the dishes in the kitchen. Mm. And Rusty's always shooting it out with the Dalton boys or Billy the Kid or somebody. It's just uh, too quiet tonight. What do you mean, too quiet? Could be an ambush. ambush. <laughs> oh, well. June, I'm... I'm very happy you made this trip. I'm glad, too. And, well, I like everything I've seen. I like everything I see, too. Hi, Dad. Hi, Mrs. Richards. Oh. Hello, Rusty. Hi, hi. Daddy, I yeah? want to ask you a favor. Sure, son. What is it? Well, tomorrow afternoon after school, is it okay if I play with the kids? You're asking me if you can play with the kids? I get tired of going to that saloon and shining shoes every afternoon. <laughs> you see, Miss Richard, shining shoes at the saloon is the only way I can pay for my room and board. Now, if you don't stop being silly, I'm going to shine the seat of your pants. Now, cut it out. <laughs> you can laugh all you want, but if I don't get up the red, he makes me sleep on the fire escape. <laughs> I make you sleep on the fire escape? Without a blanket yet. Now, look here, Rusty. You listen here, young man. What can... Hey, Rusty. Rusty, was he beating you again? Beating him again! <laughs> But leave him alone. He's just a, a little boy. Did he spike your vitamin pills or something? I did ask him for one day off. Daddy, he shouldn't be made to work in that saloon every afternoon. <laughs> the smell of that stale beer makes me nauseous. Now look at here, young No, Daddy, don't. If you have to hit somebody, 
Hit me again. No, no, don't hit her again. I'll be all right. But I don't want him to hit you. How much more can you take? No, Russ, I'll be all right. My arm is almost all better now. I don't know about your arm, but there's another part of your anatomy that's in jeopardy. <laughs> now, the joke is over, and it was not funny. Kindly go to your rooms and go to bed. June, I'm terribly sorry. I've never seen them act like this before. I just don't know what's going on. Young lady? No, Daddy, don't. Where are you going with that whiskey bottle? Daddy, you know what happens? What happens? He gets one taste of this stuff, and he just doesn't know when to stop. Give me that bottle. No, Daddy. Russ, I told you to hide the bottle. You know what happens? He gets a snoot full, then he hits us with a shoe. I hit you with a shoe? I didn't mind, but lately I've been getting dizzy spells. <laughs> upstairs, upstairs this minute. Give me that bottle. No, Daddy. Give me that bottle. <clears throat> I tried. Yeah, you're trying me too. Now go on, get upstairs. Both of you. One more peep out and you'll both sleep on the fire escape. See, Miss Richards, I told you. Get out of here! <laughs> And I wanted them to make an impression on you. Oh, they did. They did. They're obviously very resourceful. And quite concerned about your welfare. Yeah, they proved that by making me out a child beater and a drunkard. Of course. They were so transparent. They wanted to scare me off. Yeah, I know. After you leave, I'm going to scare them a little, too. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be angry with them. They're just uncertain. They realize you'll probably get married again. They're not sure what it would be like to have another member of the family. They just need a period of adjustment. Junie, you're a pretty smart girl. Everybody needs a period of adjustment to a new situation. Yeah, I guess they do. You remarry, you and your bride will need one too, won't you? Yes, we will. While the adults are making their adjustment, children's problems can be handled quite simply. You know, Junie, you're really a remarkable woman. Thank you, Danny. Don't worry about the children. Oh, there are a number of fine schools that can handle this sort of thing perfectly. Fine school? I think a military school would be just the thing for Rusty. Oh, little boys adore uniforms and marching and that sort of thing. And there's some wonderful schools in Connecticut that Terry would simply love. They have everything. Tennis, hockey, horses, everything. Yeah. Everything but parents. Terry, don't be so sentimental about it. The people who run these institutions are far better equipped to handle problem children than we are. Problem children? June, my kids are as, are as normal as blueberry pie. You call their behavior here tonight normal? Well, you said yourself, you, you, you understood why they did it. Well, I did, but the fact remains there, there is a problem. And your idea of solving it is getting rid of the kids? Danny, you're not the first person to have children. There's no need to give up a chance for happiness because of a couple of... of Brats? I wasn't going to call them that. Look, June, you just... You can't sweep kids under a carpet like so much dust, you know. They're people, too. Well, of course they are. But I like Rusty and Terry. Honestly, I do. You can love children without letting them ruin your life. Ruin my life? They are my life. They're part of your life. Danny, you're still a young man with places to go and things to see and do. You can't be dragging a couple of children around all the time. Suppose you go all to Europe on a honeymoon. A couple of months, you, what would you do with them then? What's the matter? Don't they allow children in Europe? <laughs> <laughs> After all, you can be a father without making a career of it. Look, Junie. 
Before we go any further, you and I, there's one thing I want you to understand. I come fully equipped with two children. I go with them, they go with me. We're inseparable. We're a unit, a package deal. You know, Mr. Williams, you're as corny off stage as you are on. I guess I am, Mrs. Richards. Lucky for you, you found it out before it's too late. Yes, lucky for both of us. Never made me see you as a husband. I don't know. Whatever it was, got in my eyes, too. Come on, I'll see you at your hotel. Thanks. I can get a cab. If it isn't the poor man's lunch in Fontaine. That was some performance you put on there. Nice going, making me out a drunkard and a child beater. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves. We're sorry. You're sorry? I should think you would be. What were you doing, trying to save me from my own stupidity? How dare you treat me as an imbecile? How dare you imply that I do not have the intelligence to run my own life? There's only one thing to do, and that's to apologize. That's right. And I apologize. <laughs> Sweet of you to forgive me. Oh, well, everybody makes mistakes. There's nothing to forgive. <laughs> Thank you, honey. How about you, Russ? You forgive me, too? We'll have to think it over a while. <laughs> but I apologize. Well, Daddy, you can't go around sticking your foot in everything and then expect to clear it all up with one teensy-weensy apology. <laughs> I guess you're right. I... I was wrong, and... I should be punished. <laughs> Gee, Russ. You shouldn't be too hard on him. He feels bad enough already. Well, look, Terry, it isn't every day we get him in a spot like this. <laughs> We've got him over a barrel. Let's keep him that way for a while. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, it's my son, whom I love very dearly and who I know loves me, can't forgive me because he feels I need to be punished, then and I need to be punished. I'm going out and sleep on the fire escape. Oh. <laughs> Daddy, wait! What? No blankets. <laughs> Why, you idiot? I forgive you. Hi. This is a picture of St. Jude Hospital, Memphis, Tennessee. It is supported by an organization known as ALSAC, A-L-S-A-C. And I am proud to be president of that organization. ALSAC means Aiding Leukemia-Stricken American Children. The members of my organization and I have pledged ourselves to do everything we possibly can to help fight this dreaded killer of children, leukemia. Thank you.